So I just got done doing a little fishing for blue cats down south and getting ready to head home and I'm taking all of my terminal tackle off my fishing rods and I decided it'd be a great idea to share with you guys how I rig one of these new Whisker Seeker styrofoam floats. These things are gigantic and they will float as big a bait as 99.9% .9 of people fish with. It'll float a one, one to one and a half pound live bait, no problem. Two pound probably. I had a one and a half pound carp head underneath of it, like a carp head off of a you know five, six pound carp. Floated underneath of it, it's all bone, not buoyant at all. This thing did the job. But it takes a lot of lead to hold it down. Anyway, first thing, you can use these floats with any fishing rod you want, but I like uh, this nine and a half footer. I really like from Whisker Seeker just because you have more control of a bobber. You can set the hook from further away. You can have better control of your line with a longer fishing rod. So any, I mean, a long fishing rod is not essential for float fishing, but it definitely helps a lot. Anything nine foot plus is excellent. Surf rods work great, all that stuff. So here's my main line, 85 pound braid. Next thing you do is you take a bobber stop. You can get these at any sporting goods store. I'll, uh, I'll link in the description to everything. That way you can just order it if you want. So put that on, slide the tube down, and then you cinch it up. What this does is this adjusts your depth. You slide it up the line, and then your bait will sit further down. You slide it down the line, and your bait will sit shallower. Next thing, we got a bead. Now bead isn't a requirement, but I, I've been always do it this way, so I just do it. So put my bead on the line, and then I put my float on the line. I like to thread the line down, use gravity to help you out a little bit. And generally, it goes a little smoother. Try not to put any, make sure there's no kinks in the line. They have these little, oh, there we go, right out the bottom, perfect. So, bobber stop, bead, bobber. Next, take your sinker. This is two ounces. Oh, two ounces isn't gonna be enough. Well, here's an ounce, okay. Ounce, ounce and a half, I don't know what it is. This is like a three ounce bobber, so I don't have any three ounce bank, or, uh, sinkers, bell, ugh, egg sinkers, so I just added a couple. It doesn't affect the performance at all. You just put on more lead until you get the thing to stand up the way you want it to. Okay, next. Next I do another bead. This is essential. Bead underneath of your, your egg sinkers really protects that knot, which takes a beading from those egg sinkers otherwise. So bead is essential. And I'll tie this on, my swivel with a polymer knot, because it's braid. So recap where we're at. We got bobber stop, bead, bobber, Two egg sinkers, or one really big egg sinker, egg sinker would work. Bead, and then bead, and then swivel. Next, short length of 50 pound mono. I'm gonna take, because I was blue cat fishing down here, I got some big hooks. These are 10 knot triple threats. They definitely get the job done for blue cats of all sizes. I'm a big fan of the no knot snell, but whatever knot you want to use, go for it. The most important thing is that you're good at it. Like, you can talk about knot strength, whatever. The strongest knot is the one that you're best at tying, so go with the one that you like the best. And then, I like to play around with the bead colors, like, you know, put some glow in the dark. And let's see, we got some of the, the Whisker Seeker neon ones. Then maybe we'll go another glow in the dark. Just something a little different. And then, oh, tie it on. I like to use a uni knot for heavy.
heavier line like this 50 pound mono. So that's it. Start, bobber stop, bead, bobber, egg sinkers, then your bead, down to a swivel. These beads are 100% optional. And then your hook. That's it. There's a million different things you can do with this. You can suspend a bait over wood cover, or you can drift a bait across the mud flat and cover more ground. You can suspend cut baits, you can suspend live baits. You can put baits right on the bottom with a float. And the float bouncing around in the current or bouncing around in the waves actually gets that live bait worked up and keeps, keeps, them, keeps them struggling, keeps them fighting, keeps them doing all that stuff that's going to draw the big boy in. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Regardless, thanks for watching. I hope you catch a giant.